Good morning. I'm Richard Haas. Uh, as Rena said, I'm president of the Council on Foreign Relations, and I want to welcome everyone here to the Pratt House on this glorious fall day in the greatest city in the world, even if we do not currently have the greatest sports teams in the world. <laughs> it's fitting that the ICSS, the International Center for Sports Security, is holding security, Securing Sport 2015 here at the Council on Foreign Relations. This is an organization that's normally associated less with sport than with questions of war and peace, questions of economics and politics. But then when you think about it, sport also deals with this same agenda. For those of us who are students of what is going on in the world, sports can be revealing. They turn out to be yet another example, for example, of globalization, of what happens anywhere does not stay there. Sports turned out to be an early signal of the shift in power around the world. We're seeing excellence popping up in more places than ever before. Something I heartily endorse in principle, but have trouble with in practice when it translates into America losing the Ryder Cup. <laughs> Sports are also revealing of countries and societies. There are few better ways to understand Japan than to read the book The Chrysanthemum and the bat, but to understand China than by following government attitudes they are toward the often forbidden but somehow tolerated game of golf. Now I know the ideal is that sport is removed from the political world, that it offers something of a respite, and this is true at times. Sports can be and often are a critical refuge for, t for divided and war-torn societies. And sports also offer a place where individuals can develop, where it's possible to learn both self-reliance and teamwork. Indeed, I've come around to the idea that young people ought to play two sports, one individual and one team, just for those reasons. And I know from personal experience, from say rooting for the Knicks or hitting a golf ball, just how important sports can be in teaching individuals how to manage frustration or keeping one's temper in check. Sports can be especially good for girls. In too many society, girls are held back by tradition or prejudice and a lack of opportunity. Sports, therefore, can be a real force for change in promoting health, in encouraging the continuation of education, in delaying marriage. And we know from a large number of studies that there's no better way to promote economic development than to promote literacy among girls and women. Sports supports just this. But sports are also valuable because they are not removed from politics. They can be a bridge. We saw it in ping pong diplomacy between the United States and the People's Republic of China. Sports have been something of a bridge, in this case a wrestling mat, between the United States and Iran. And sports have offered a bridge between the United States and Cuba when it comes to baseball. And I'm just hoping this last bridge between the United States and Cuba happens to be the Triborough Bridge, often called the RFK Bridge, because the Yankees need all the help they can get. <laughs> now, all that said, we need to keep sports in perspective. Student athletes must be more students than athletes. We must keep in mind that being realistic, sports will sports will provide a financial ladder only for a special few. I would add to this that those participating and benefit from, benefiting from sports, the athletes themselves, have an obligation and an opportunity to be a role model for the virtues of exercise and health, for discipline, and for sportsmanship. We also need to understand, and I know this is central to your mission, Mohammed, that sports need regulation and oversight. Cheating, gambling, doping, corruption, all can and do undermine the integrity of sports. And I would simply say that transparency and accountability are no less essential to the world of sports than they are to markets and governance. Sports must also be made safe for the participants. More needs to be done, for example, to prevent and contend with concussions. Sports need to be safe, made safe for all those participating and all those attending them, events. The Munich Olympics, and more recently, the Boston Marathon come to, come to mind here. So securing sport is a good and a necessary concept. 
So let me end again by welcoming you to the Pratt House, by applauding your good and important work, and by wishing you the most productive of meetings. I'd only add, though, one thought, that you ought not to leave all the good ideas that will surface here today and tomorrow here in what you might describe as the intellectual locker room, but rather take these good ideas and bring them onto the field where they can make a big and much needed difference. Thank you very much.